93.3 KZOZ FM, San Luis Obispo. The home of Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. They have no chemistry at all. Jeff and Jeremy here, Dumbass of the Day, brought to you by Peterson's U-Cart. They're in Atascadero. They've got all your landscape supplies, garden soil, compost, walk-on bark, gravel, boulders. They've got a ton of stuff. If it goes in your yard, they got it. Make sure you go see them on Gusta Road or visit them online at Peterson, the letter U, cart.com. Hey, let's do dumbass of the day. Wah, 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 wah. I bought an iPad. Well, I bought it from Radio Shack, so the next day I took it back because it didn't seem right. <laughs> I didn't get it from the Apple store. It felt weird. <laughs> Brought it back. They sell it to you weird. It felt like an underground drug deal or something. <laughs> I went in, I said, I want the guy, can I help you? I, yeah, I want to get an iPad. He said, you want one? Yeah, that's what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> you want a case? And I picked out a case and then I left. But I just, it didn't feel good. <laughs> just show me how to use anything. Just gave me an iPad in the box. I needed something else. I needed something deeper. <laughs> and a better connection. So the next day I took it back. I didn't go back to the same radio shack because I don't want to have that confrontation. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you bringing it back? Because you didn't sell it to me, right? You need to learn some customer service skills and get yourself a blue shirt. <laughs> So I bring it back, it was $810 total, and I bought it with my debit card, and I said, can you put the money back on the card? They said, no. <laughs> I said, well, um, can I get cash? They said, we don't have $810 cash. <laughs> I said, why not? You're a business. Why, you, why don't you have money? Go knock on Jamba Juice's door and get $810, man. Give me my money, dog. Where's my money? So how am I gonna get the money? I said, we'll, uh, we'll send a check to you. <laughs> I said, how long would a check take? I said, 10 to 14 days. You got to save up or something? Why don't you? <laughs> Why did it take you so long? Give me my money, man. I'm a dumbass of the day. 93.3 KZOC. When they started forcing batteries down our throats, that's uh, when they lost all gonna, credibility with me. You're going to need batteries. Yeah. You're going to need them. I know. I buy them at Costco. So. I'm like, oh, no, I'm cool on batteries. Thanks, uh, thanks for offering. He's like, uh, yeah, but, you know, batteries, uh, you run out of them. You need them for everything. <laughs> like, are you really hard selling me on some batteries? <laughs> Come on. Ah, uh, let's see run here. Run my ass down to Harbor Freight and get some batteries for, on the cheap. I don't know if you could buy one of these at Radio Shack. Is Radio Shack still around? Yes. Okay. Ish. Yes. Like okay. Coast Electronics. I know their Coast Electronics still is still radio. around. They still got like a license for Radio Shack. I don't know if they thing. can buy one of these. Like it's still around here. I bet you there's plenty of parts of the country where Radio Shack is not a force. Technology, a lazy son, and a paranoid mom is what put together our dumbass of the day today. Those are the three ingredients. Technology, lazy son, paranoid mom. Police responded to a report of an intruder at a Sacramento home busted down the door because a woman called 911 said she was in bed with her daughter and she heard something downstairs. I'd say about 1 a.m. I hear, I was like, I was like, hey, someone's in my house. They're like, call the police. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Call the police. From the bathroom, the woman spoke to a 911 operator. She contemplated jumping out the window. Second floor, that's not good. But then the cops showed up. So I put her in the tub. I get the ladder and I'm like, oh, I was going to go out the window. I'm on the phone with the dispatcher and he's like, ma'am, what do you hear? I'm like, I hear someone walking down my stairs. So it's like boom, 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 boom. And you hear police, police. And then a shuffle. And then you hear laughter. (laughs) <laughs> it was a Roomba. It was the, the remote control vacuum cleaner. It was, I don't know if it was a Roomba, but it was, yeah, it was a Roomba. Here. <laughs> My son had turned on the vacuum cleaner because he didn't want to do chores before he left for the weekend. We hadn't used this vacuum in almost two years. It went down the stairs. It cost me a door. Yeah, they busted in the door. I mean, th- I mean I'm happy, right? The cops show up. I call 911. I got an intruder in the house. They show up, they bust the door open. And then they start laughing. (laughs) 
<laughs> All right, guys, we got the intruder. We can just take the batteries out. So they make her pay for the door that they busted down? They're not paying for it. That's her tax dollars. Yeah, right. I don't want to pay for her damn door. She should pay for it. Uh, I wanted to, I really want to get one of these. You Why? Have she hasn't used hers in two years. Well, I, mean, she, I was just thinking she's the worst spokesperson for a Roomba. <laughs> she must not have a dog that sheds. We have to vacuum every My other day. My wife is trying to get every me. Every other and, day. You know, with Mother's Day coming up, I mean, it's the, the hint is not gone unnoticed on the Roomba front. And it's like, I don't want it. Shark makes one that was cheaper. I had a really good deal at Costco a while back. And now it's full price again. They're expensive regardless. I mean, the best deal I've ever seen is three eighteen, three hundred and eighteen dollars for a vacuum cleaner. But I never have to do anything. I don't know. Is it that good? I don't know. This one was the self-emptying one too, which was the whole benefit is I could really be lazy. What was the price at? Uh, God. What was the price at Costco? It was it was four fifty five originally, and then it was dropped all the way down to three eighteen. Oh, should have snagged that. I know. Well, I got a speeding ticket. My wife said, nope, you're vacuuming. So I have to keep vacuuming. No Roomba because I got Amazon, caught speeding. 433. Is this the Shark? Yeah, but its list price is 599 normally. Yeah, what's the uh, what's the deal on the uh, review? So Ooh, is it getting news, good stars? You can buy it for 321 Are they getting good stars? Um, this gets four and a half stars with 18,000 ratings. So, yeah. I'd say that's pretty solid. Yeah. Anyways, just make sure it's not running and you call the cops and then... You want to hear the worst? Let's hear the worst. Okay. The worst what? Review? Yeah. I don't want to read that one. That's too long. All the, all the bad reviews. Okay, here's... This. People get all passionate. And they don't, just go off. Don't waste your time and money. What a waste of money. Do yourself a favor. Buy a nice vacuum. If you have a coffee table in the middle of your floor, it will not find its way to the other side and vacuum the remaining area. Same goes for the kitchen table. It only cleaned about one quarter of our living room and less in the dining room. Be better off with random spot cleaning like the cheap versions or using an old stand-up. Well, step up and spend money on a Roomba instead of going with the cheap shark, you son of a What cheap areas son of did a it bitch? clean? I, I wouldn't even pick up... Uh, what uh, happens when you go cheap? It wouldn't even pick up small lint or hair. I will be returning this. Oh, good for you. First time we ran it, it got stuck in my bedroom and faulted out because of a sensor, and I had to go... Fishing for it. Oh, you might like that, Jeremy. You get to go fishing for your vacuum cleaner. Uh, underneath the bed. Normally, I love shark vacuums, but this is a complete fail. Just do yourself the hassle. Do yourself the do yourself the hassle and move on. Do yourself a favor. Forget the hassle and move on. I She's just mad because the damn Roomba wouldn't go on the other side of the box in her living room. I the, her soapbox. My she problem was standing with on. buying the Roomba is not the night nighttime intruder. Uh, situation, but it is the fact that I feel like getting a room before your house is waving the white flag on laziness. Like laziness has won. No, once I mean, you once you get the room, I'd sit there and I'd watch TV and have something beverage right there, have my feet up on the couch as the room goes underneath me. Just like how hard is it really to just vacuum? Maybe next time do a little research before you... And it's good It's good exercise to vacuum, you know? Call the cops. Congratulations, Miss Sacramento. You are Jeff and Jeremy. Dumbass of the day. 93.3 KZOC. Don't be a dummy when it comes to your landscape supplies. Go to Peterson Ucart on Gusta Road, just north of Quickie Car Wash in Atascadero. We love Ucart. You stay. Jeff, Jeremy, and Whitney. Hello, Wit. Hello. Um, so Jeff was telling me, and he put something on Facebook yesterday. We're still in the red. We're, we're trying to get to orange. And what you said to me yesterday, I think, Jeff, was that we're the only, we're, we're a part of Southern California, which is weird, but whatever. Um, but we're the only w- No, it's not. Region. If you look at a map, if you look at a map, we are like the northernmost reach of Southern California. Yeah. If you were to divide the state in absolute thirds, San Luis Obispo County would be the northernmost county in Southern California. Okay, but we're we're still in the red, and the rest of Southern California regions are in orange, which means they've progressed, and we haven't. Which is weird to me because we have a lot less people, 
and it seems like we're spread out. I have never set foot in Ventura and said, man, this place is a lot cleaner than San Luis Obispo. I've been to Ventura, actually. I went there, I went and looked at a furniture store, and we had some time to kill, and I wasn't that impressed with it. It kind of reminded me of slow, but smaller. And dirty. Oh, my God. Filthy. No, I don't know about that. But <laughs> Hey, Whit. Hi. Hi, Whitney. Dirty ass Ventura County. So, uh, why do you think what, what is this? What is this all about? Is it because Cal Poly's here? Is it the Cal Poly no. kids? Are they bringing this down? No. So, what I've come to understand is it has really nothing to do. It has to come down to testing. And so, if the if people are not testing, like I, I don't know if you've seen the communication out there from County Health where they encourage you to go in and get tested and to do it often. And if you're not being tested, those numbers will not offset the positivity case rate. So if let's say we have one positive case but zero people are testing that are testing negative, then we're showing as we just have one person. But if we have one positive, one negative, they equal each other out. Does Here's my sense? problem with that. When you go to testing centers, you figured you're going there because uh, we had a we had an incident here where somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody got it. <laughs> And they had to quarantine at home, and the rest of us you had to get tested. Me. I'm cool with that. No, I don't. Know. It's just so silly, anyways. But we all had to go get tested, and they're like sending I mean, us down. I went down. to Ventura County. I mean, of course, I, I you know, I would have tested myself. But they, uh, they, they, they were like, you can go down to this county facility, and I'm like, I don't want to go there because I just had a feeling that if 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 I had symptoms, that's where I would go get tested. Right, because people. So were- now you're just putting me in danger of being around other people that may have symptoms and may be positive. And I ended up going to a CVS drive through and I did it in my car by myself. It was great. I think our county needs to do a better job of, number one, getting the tests. Like, wouldn't it be great if they could drop off kits to businesses like ours, like yours, Whitney, like others around downtown in the county where they could test at their, actually, at their place of work rather than having to go somewhere to have it done? Yeah, well, that would be rad. I mean... I I guess I would go one step further, and if that was implemented, is the test like an immediate, you get the results? Is that the vision you have? Because even still, if you're getting a test at your door, that doesn't mean you're getting, if you know. It all depends on, there's two types of tests. There's ones that you get the results within an hour or less, and there's another test that takes uh, more, more, you know, maybe that's all it needs. Maybe we, the test I took to get back on an airplane, leaving Mexico to come back to the United States, um, I got the results in 45 minutes Dang. in Mexico, in Mexico, Jeff, the place that Jeff thinks is the worst place to ever go. And it's, he thinks every time I go there, someone's going to cut my head off and, and put it on TMZ. It's second only to Ventura County. I walked in there. They, it took me two seconds. She, doink, doink. Each nose, 45 minutes later, got an email. Believe it or not. Oh, you are, you're, you're negative. Well, maybe Ventura is getting their tests the... from Mexico. I don't know. No, I'm just saying, we need to get our S together, man. We need to get it together because, for God's sakes, you can go to Mexico, and I had the test taken at the resort I was staying at. Every resort down there, of course, most of them are American-owned, so they've got it all set up, have a company they come in that is licensed and legit that gives the test, and you move on. Why couldn't there be, there's food trucks, why couldn't there be a test truck? It goes around to different businesses, maybe you get a few of them together. It's not actually a truck, it's just a person in a car with the kit. And they go around and you could do the saliva test or you could do the nose test, whatever. Well, I think the, the problem probably lies, correct me if I'm wrong, Whitney, is the fact that we don't have a lot of medical professionals that live here. So you have to have somebody witness these tests. So even if you got this magical COVID test truck that gave you a taco if you took a test... Um, then, you're, no, you're, then, then, then I was using that example. Would there be I don't a expect... nurse available to ride along in this, in this, and verify the testing? I don't think you have to be a nurse to do a test. Sounds like maybe you need to get the county health supervisor on the show to dig into these questions. Well, I'll, I'll just, I'll just, to I'll just say something that offends that person, <laughs> and then I'll get the manager. But I think it's good to ask those questions. Yeah. I like, I like that you're kind of being innovative and. Thinking of ways outside the box, it's good. They don't even, you don't even have to be a, a, you know, a nurse or a doctor to provide the vaccine shot. I mean, for God's sakes, they're allowing dentists to do this if, just, if they want to. No. Yeah. What? To, to give the vaccine? What yeah. do they give it in your mouth? No. I they, don't want that in my mouth. Well, they do put a needle in your mouth to numb it, but no, they actually put it in your arm. <laughs>
Oh I'm talking about like if, if you've all been to the dentist and had yourself numbed, right? They they have to use a needle to do that. So they're very capable of giving you an injection in your arm. I think actually anybody could probably do this. I mean, come on. We've all got a vaccine before, right, or a flu shot. They wipe your arm with a little alcohol, they and they push, and they're done. So, yeah, we could do a better job, and then we could be in a more progressive tier, and maybe that would help local businesses get back. And working. All right, we'll have more with Whitney coming up about what's going on right now in the red tier because we still can do stuff. Are you suggesting that we do better? Yes. So go get tested is what you're saying to offset those uh, those positives. Those That's people? what I'm saying. Okay, if you can, go get tested. Whoa. Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. Jeff, Jeremy, and Whitney hanging out. We're uh, talking about what's going on downtown slow. Still in the red. Haven't got out of there yet. We need more people to get tested, apparently. It's very inconvenient, but I guess if you want to be progressive and move forward and get your restrictions. What does this mean, by the way? By the way, if we go to orange, does that just mean that we're going from 25% to like 50% occupancy in a restaurant or whatever? I mean, do we even know? Yeah, something like that. Do you think we'll be there in two weeks? What's that? I was asking Whitney, do you think we'll be there in two weeks? Because we gotta wait two I, weeks now. I hope so. Gosh, we were on, we had like one week down. I don't know what happened. Mm, I know. Um, so what's going on downtown in the red? Well, <laughs> <laughs> we have been busy at our organization, just gearing up for some of our large scale kind of outdoor activations. Uh, one of the, I mean, besides, before I get into that, I do want to announce the downtown center cinema is opening back up. They've been closed since March of last year, which is just crazy. I love the um, uh, the recliners that they have in there. That's my theater yeah. of choice because of the type of seating that they have. Very nice. Those seats and are probably wondering, like, what what's going on? Yeah, it's just <laughs> so heartbreaking when we the business so has been for so closed. Long. Yeah, really. So is. they're opening. I don't know. I, it looked like uh, there's a Mortal Kombat movie coming out. I guess or it's out. I'm not sure, but that will be there. They have all kinds of movies that they're offering, which I I think I maybe just. Stop paying attention to movies. Cause Did they? they um, have you heard if they've changed their popcorn? I have not. I've never been a fan of their popcorn. Uh, I like everything <laughs> not, else about the place, but the popcorn. Know. Yeah, the popcorn they could do better. You. The seats are amazing. I mean, we go when we go to a movie theater. We go there because of the seats. And um, that's the second. Do they better. have Coke Zero too, which I like. That's the second. Do better. You've dropped. But they could do better on the popcorn. They really could. <laughs> Third. No news on the popcorn. I don't have news on that, but I can find out for you. (laughs) We got Whitney on. We're talking about uh, a bunch of stuff that's going to be going on downtown. We just found out that the downtown slow cinemas are reopening, so you can get back down there, get comfy in those awesome seats that they have, watch some cool movies. Uh, Plus, uh, a bunch of other stuff is going on, including uh, Mission Plaza. Now, you guys always have kind of some new thing going on. Last time I was down there, I don't know, it was a week or so ago, it looked like a bunch of Asian rugs hanging off a scaffolding or something. What was that? Oh, so that is, yeah, so the city of San Luis Obispo is doing, it's called a pop-up in the plaza, so every month they will be featuring a different nonprofit. so this month, April, is the Slow Museum of Art, and that's what you are seeing, is an art installation, they partnered with an artist out of Los Angeles. The, an artist that does Asian rugs? Have you seen this, Jeff? No. Oh. No, it's really cool, it's like hand-painted, all on like vinyl, it almost looks like, um sales or something but yeah it's all kind of i don't okay. i don't know the story behind it but that's a pretty good accurate. i mean i saw it from 50 yards away so it looked like a bunch of asian rugs to me it's but really I went, cool okay. at night okay. like the way the lights go through it it's really pretty so if you're able to check it out at nighttime i would strongly encourage it it will be there through the end of august or sorry, august april and then it's gone and then we take over all right, we got the Mayflower Initiative coming up. Over 85 locations throughout downtown will be uh, doing paintings on their windows, right? Correct, yeah. We started the Mayflower Initiative last May. That's a lot. Uh, and we're doing the second edition this year, and it's pretty crazy. I saw somebody jump the gun. I, I forget which business it was, but I was driving by, and they had a bunch of flowers. Oh, it was Mark. Uh, Mark yeah. What's it called? The Mark IV? What is it called? The Mark? The, the Mark. The Mark. <laughs> Just oh, the Mark okay. right now. They red-lighted. What do you mean? In drag terms, when you go first yeah, before the green light, you uh, you red light and then you get disqualified. But Dis- it, take a razor blade and scrape it and get disqualified. No, no, no. that's the whole initiative. So oh. it's like flowers are popping up downtown. So you'll see actually a lot of the businesses have started to do it. 
Um, some of the artists, we have like 65 different artists that are participating, and they're, some of them are doing multiple windows. Ah. And so they're getting a head start on some of them. And I think that's kind of the cool part of this is you're going to see changes throughout the month starting now through the end of May of different window paintings, uh, chalk art in Mission Plaza. Um, we're working with the Cal Poly Rose Float team. They're building something that will be installed in the Mission Plaza. They'll have some animatronics involved. Like, it's pretty cool. Are they going to get tested before they go work on it? What's up? Are they going to get tested before they go work Don't on it? Don't start this, Jeff. <laughs> well, you said earlier <laughs> that, that, you know, the Cal Poly uh, kids, are, they stopped testing. Get you them know, tested. I almost... <laughs> feel gross because I just told everybody to go get tested. And the number one thing I hate about the last year is how everybody's always telling everybody else what to do. I don't like people telling me what to do. I can figure it out. <laughs> well, sometimes you just need a, a, a gentle nudge. A reminder, maybe. Yes, a reminder. Like, you know, when your phone tells you, hey. Um, okay, so uh, what can we talk about farmer's market, though? That's what I'm really excited about. I'm driving around. We're going to Ruti's Farms. We're getting the tally box. We go to uh, Hayashi's, Hayashi's, sorry, Hayashi's. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, Jeff, Hayashi's makes some amazing hot sauces and jams and other things. I always think that place is just a fruit stand, a vegetable produce place, but I've been buying their Hell's uh, hot sauce. It's hotter really? than hell, but it's really good. Sorry, sidetracked. Um, <laughs> when, when, when are we bringing the market back so we can get all of this in one place downtown? Yeah, so we are planning for our market to return as the certified farmer's market, uh, so just our farmers and a few to-go vendors, uh, on May 6th. So it'll be a limited format uh, with masks being required, social distancing being required, but it'll feature all of your Thursday night favorite farmers like Hayashi, um, and they are in the prime of produce season right now, so I'm, I'm hopeful that it's going to look really good. We're going to yeah. practice all those COVID rules and regulations that we've come to know and love, and it'll be a good good time. Okay, I'm not crazy about having to wear a mask, but I understand that you're going to be around a lot of people and you're going to be close to fruit and vegetables, and it's probably a good idea not to spew all over it. Ooh, a couple of questions yes. for you. Also the only way we're allowed to operate. <laughs> no, I understand. You also are following state and local, probably county regulations, right? Yep, that's right. We've had to submit plans to the county, the city. We've had to do multiple plans, multiple versions, multiple meetings. What if I wear a um, visor? Or, you know the, the plexiglass uh, the visor? What is that called? Uh, well, the oh, mask. the shield. The, the shield. The well Can I mask. wear a shield instead of a mask? You know, I am not the speaker of mask truth on what is... Well, we're yes going to need no. you to look into that before next week. Because I think if you're a shield, you still have to wear a mask. People might want to wear a shield instead of a mask. I think you have yeah, to... I'm, I'm going to say yes. If you're wearing that shield, then it will be okay. What if you oh, have one have... of the hoods from Grey's Anatomy? Have you seen this? They have a little microphone in them. Oh, yeah. Those are fancy. I wish I had one of those. I want to get one of those, too. I don't know what the microphone's for, but... Probably just so you can be heard clearly. <laughs> if you've ever what, do they have a little speaker box on their belt uh, or I something? I took my daughter to the first, her first golf lesson the other day, and like it's windy. It's over in Los Osos Valley, so it's windy, and I'm... And the, like the teachers asking me questions from like twenty feet away, and I, you know, because it's a, it's a, you know, it's a county, it's at a, it's at a city ran facility mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So everybody's wearing a mask, and I'm trying to scream answers to her questions across the golf course to her. <laughs> it was, it was like an episode of of PS. Yes, this it happened to me, <laughs> Whitney. I went in, I got a new doctor. He's very afraid. He's older, and he's very afraid of coronavirus and he makes me wear you know, I wore a mask he's like I need you to put another mask on and one of these visors and then he comes in and he has two masks on and a visor I can't and he's a soft talker ooh, and, ooh, ooh, ooh. and I've been working in radio wearing headphones for 25 years so I'm deaf I'm like I can't what he's like your prostate looks good <laughs> I'm like okay thank god for the doors in the doctor's office I hope it was shut all the way <laughs> Well, it's important for a man to know his prostate's good once he hits 45. So he wanted me to know that everything looked good. Well, everything was good. But, man, it was a pain in the ass. So I don't know uh, how we got on this. No pun intended. This got <laughs> awkward yeah. and weird. This got awkward and weird. Better. But now everybody knows I've got a good prostate. So Yeah. The world is better now that they know that. Hey, uh, Wear uh, a mask when you go downtown, and you're going to find out for sure on the visor for next week. Yep, I will okay. find out for you. I have two questions I need to ask you. They're uh, revolving around things that we talked about yesterday. One, because I think it's your area of expertise, and that is the jackfruit um, uh, used as a pork substitute. Mm. 
Do Number you, one, do you even know what a jackfruit is? Have you seen I one? I do, yes. Okay, have you ever... Is that something you've ever seen at Farmer's Market? Um, I've never seen it. No, I've actually never seen it at, um, at our market. Um, yesterday we had Jeffrey Wiesinger. He is the... Uh, kind of looks like an ugly avocado. He is the best barbecue in North County, uh, uh, voted by, I don't know, some publication. Up there a lot of people, actually. And... Um, and he said that he's adding a, a vegan option uh, for pulled pork, and it's jackfruit. It's barbecued jackfruit. Um, first of all, what are your feelings on barbecuing fruit? <laughs> I don't. Have you ever had jackfruit? No, no. He says it's like, very similar to pork. It looks like it. I mean, I'm looking at it right it, now. It kind of looks like squash, but it's like stringy. Yeah, it's kind of like um, it is. It's like a stringy. I don't know, like. It's like jicama, but like more, it's like denser. It's very weird. And if I guess if it's cooked correctly and you're not a, I don't know, I kind of go back to the whole thing, like if you want the cookie, just eat the cookie. But I guess if you're not, a, if you don't eat meat, like I guess that's the best alternative. Hey, let me I've refer you guys, before. let me refer you guys back to an article from 2017 in Women's Health Magazine. Thank you. And it says jackfruit, uh, the next uh, biggest thing on restaurant menus uh, it's popping up everywhere is pulled pork, carnitas, and tacos. Okay. So this is something Yeah, that's I definitely have seen it on menus at a higher frequency, but I, I mean, I, it was fine. I, I didn't dislike it. It's from I India? Think it's more of just like a... Native, from, native from India and Asia. Yeah, it's also they, they're Florida, giant. Florida and Hawaii, yeah. I, it's the I'm national just, fruit of Bangladesh. It says, I, I like it says it's not uncommon for one to weigh 50 to 80 pounds, one one jackfruit. Oh, wow. So if you could buy one jackfruit, then, then I'm guessing that would yield lots of faux pork sandwiches. Mm. Yeah. No, they're crazy. I, they're gigantic. I think there's an episode, I don't know if you've ever seen that Netflix series that Zac Efron did where he travels the globe. There's one where he like goes and hacks off a jackfruit out of the tree, but um, it, it was a fine alternative, I he guess. If hacks, you're into that. She said hacks off a jackfruit, just yeah. just to be clear. <laughs> And <laughs> just get everything on the up and up. And no, <laughs> and and unlike you, Whitney, we don't go around watching Zach Efron documentaries. So what um, a local legend! <laughs> say Zach hacked off a jackfruit three I'm times. I'm trying fast. to help your rating. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, is it country fried steak or chicken fried steak? I have only ever refer to it as chicken fries. Ah, even though it's Sorry, not Jeff. chicken. Sorry. Even though it's not chicken, it's even beef. Even though it's not chicken. Ah. <laughs> Such an American thing, right? And you now are, we you. can we can just wrap up the poll question you and are, we can just move on. You are dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have a good week. We'll talk to you next week. Hey, thanks. You too. All right, there goes Whitney. Downtownslow.com. Make sure you check it out for everything they're doing. We talked about the Mayflower thing going on, the plaza, and, of course, uh, the farmer's market coming back. That's downtownslow.com.
Subscribe to the Jeff and Jeremy podcast now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and YouTube. It's your Central Coast commute-friendly podcast.